thought about an old song my mama used to sing. She'd say, As Jacob was traveling, was weary one day, not on a stone for a pillow did lay. A vision appeared of a ladder so high, it stood on the earth while the top reached the sky. Hallelujah to Jesus who died on the tree to raise up this ladder of mercy for me. Press onward, climb upward, the top is in view. And the crown of bright glory awaiting for you. This ladder so tall and yet so well made stood thousands of years, but it's never decayed. It went from the heavens, it reeled and it rocked, but the angels they guarded from bottom to top. Hallelujah to Jesus who died on the tree To raise up this ladder of mercy for me Press onward, climb upward, top is in view And a crown of bright glory awaiting for you Ah, oh, say, Mama, I don't know what makes you sing like that Don't understand it, Mama won't nobody go to church with you? Daddy won't go? I swear to God ain't going. Sister won't go? I said, Mama, what makes you sing like that? She says, it's the Lord, son, it's the yeah. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Mama, I said, I can't understand it. I said, I sure don't feel like singing. And I don't see how you always get up on Sunday morning a sing. She'd say, it's the Lord, son, it's the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and I got saved. I just joined no mama and I said, it is the Lord. Mama, you're right. It's the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Oh, she knows what you're talking about. Oh, mama. Sometimes I'll be in meeting with her. Not often now. But I get to. I get her up with me. Me and her are saying some old hymn out of the book. Mama raised her little hand. Praise God for a preacher boy. Why, she thinks I'm better Sunday. Huh? Yeah. Why, she would cry me to blow my mind. And all the whiskers they had on his face, he wouldn't pray me for her. Yeah. I mean, I know I ain't so, but you never could convince my old gray head mama that. Yeah. She thinks I'm preaching a preacher, boy. Yeah. I don't ever tell her no different. I don't say amen, mama. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I won't preach to you tonight, no old, old message. I want to preach to you on God's amazing grace. Yeah. God's amazing grace tonight. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord Christ, that it might depart from me. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. How about that? My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For therefore, I take pledge in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. But Daisy will leave while we pray, brother. Oh, God, thank you, Lord.
said, all right, look at the way of the Bible, chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Now, it's true in Paul's day that God's grace is sufficient for whatever the need was. Now, I'll tell you, in 1986, brother, God's amazing grace is still sufficient. Yeah. Don't matter what no doctor says, don't matter what no professor says, I mean, God's got grace today, brother. Yeah. Somebody said God can't do it. God can do it. God's yeah. got grace today. I mean, it's sufficient for the violence, the problems, the circumstances, whatever's wrong in your life. God's got grace for you. Yeah. The Bible said in verse 9, He said, My grace is. Somebody said, what does that little word is mean? That meant it was prayers and grace right there. How many he said, my grace is? That ain't next week, that ain't tomorrow, that ain't next month, but that's prayers and grace. And I'm glad God's got grace for right now, ain't you? I mean, sometimes, brother, I couldn't wait for next week. I couldn't wait for next month. Sometimes I need a touch of God but right now. I mean, he said, my grace is. That means it was prayers and grace. He said, my grace is sufficient. Somebody said, what does sufficient mean? That means it was plenteous grace. Not only is it prayers and grace, but it's plenteous grace. I mean, there's grace and more grace. And somebody said there's a gas shortage. Some of the farmers said they the water shortage. But some of them said, are they the shortage of a foreigner? But you ain't never been to Miami if you believe that, brother. But somebody said they the shortage on this and that. But I want to tell you tonight, there's plenty of God's amazing grace. I mean, when the river and the waters may run dry, but God's got grace tonight. And there's more grace to go around. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. That for thee meant it was personal grace. I mean, I'm glad you got saved. I'm glad every one of you got in by the grace of God. But I'm glad I got in, brother. I mean, all grace, personal grace. I'm glad the children got in. I'm glad them children up here a while ago sang about God. That blessed my heart, brother. Oh, somebody said, why well, can they sing like right that? Because God's amazing grace. And I mean, that grace, brother, reaches down and changes women, or women, me and boys, life. That grace will get the job done. Personal grace. I'm glad of that tonight. I thought about an old outlaw. <coughs> a man that's enslaved, praying, hard to die, should have died, he is guilty. He's riding around all over his country, selling people into slavery and bondage. One day, he was slave and self in bondage. He got under conviction by the Holy Ghost of God, and the Lord dealt with his heart. And old John Newton pinned down the soul. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I thought about old William Copper over there on the London Bridge going to commit suicide. I and about the kid and fair, and God dealt with old William Cover. He got out of that bridge and got saved, and pinned down the soul. There's a fountain filled with blood. And a sinners underneath that floor lose all their gifts and saved. God's amazing grace is transformed and changed people down through the ages. I mean, somebody said, now the Bible said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Somebody said, what does that my mean? That means he's the author of this grace. It ain't your grace. It ain't my grace. But it's his grace, brother. And he gives it out like he wants to give it out tonight. I mean, I thought about that. If he's the author of this grace, what kind of grace does he have? Well, first of all, tonight he's got saving grace. I mean, I like saving grace, don't you? How somebody said, I mean, all the time talking about hyper-caronism, hyper-dispensation is. I'm hyper-gracism, amen? That's what I am, brother. I like the grace of God, brother. I mean, that grace, brother, they can clean a man, boy, girl up. I'm watching them in the blood of Jesus. I'm like a new mama out of them. I'm like a new daddy out of them. I like that grace, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm preaching. 
down to Alabama prison a while back. Old black man, about 60 years old. He had done 30 years in the penitentiary. Named Sanders. He was my solo singer in my meetings. I'd play for him and he had sang. I mean, he had sang too, brother. Boy, he got through, I was ready to preach every time. Yeah. He had sang on good old black spirituals. And I said, thank God, Sanders, you done? He'd say, I'm done, preach. I'd say, well, I'm ready, brother. Get yeah. your feet over there and let's preach a while. Yeah. Well, we work together but like a pair of you, day in and day out. Oh, Sanders, he'd say country. He'd say play the piano for the country. I'd strike him a chord. He'd say, thank God we come through that way. Yeah. We might need a steel eye dog to get out of here after a while. Yeah. I can't like it, brother. Yeah. Yeah. God comes by. Amen. Yeah. 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 I was up there teaching a Bible study in the morning. You never would think I'd do no teaching, would you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was trying to teach the book of Job in the morning there in the prison. Old Sanders was sitting over here about there. And the call came through the intercom system. Such Sanders come up to the front office where the guard sat in. He went up there and I figured it was over a bump change or maybe a visiting list or something like that. And we went on about our meeting and I got went out to the chow hall to eat dinner with them. You know a Baptist preacher ain't gonna miss dinner time. If they feed and I talk for dinner time, went down there going to eat with them and I looked over at the gate. Hold back the gate where the guard checks one in the front office and the psychiatrist and all the psychologists and the personal workers. There they were. And I stood old man Sanders over there. That old black man, gray headed, done 30 years in the penitentiary. But he stood with a three piece suit on. Oh, I mean, he had one of them goodwill suits on. That thing was about gold color. He had an old ragged t shirt up under that bed. And that coat on that bed. And them book ass shoes they give you in prison. And them witches legs rolled up. He can holler and come here, preacher. Let me talk to you. I walked over and said, Sanders, what you doing in them clothes you got on? He said, preacher, how do I look? I said, you look like a convict, Sanders. He said, oh, preacher, I know you say that. I said, what you doing in them clothes on? He said, brother Danny, said, I've been here a long time, son. But this morning, they told me they're fixing a parole man turned me loose. I said, sir, man, you better quit lying and tell me the truth. He said, brother Danny, let me show you my paper. He reached in that pocket and pulled out the paper. It said, Sander, parole on December the 22nd of 1985. I said, Sanders, I don't believe it. He said, I don't believe it, Daddy, but I'm leaving here this morning. I'm going to go out of here and live for God, son. I said, Brother Sanders, what yeah. you going to do when they walk up to you and tell you you look like a convict? He said, I'm going to pull out my paper and show them I've been paroled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And down there, yeah. oh, my little brother, that's some other step on top of. He was always an outlaw. And I don't believe he got saved, but I just pull out my paper. Yeah. I got my paper. Yeah. Thank God I'm in parole. I ain't the same no more. Yeah. I'm talking about saving grace, brother. Yeah. Reaching down and getting people out of sin. Yeah. I remember one time, me and my wife out visiting. Door knocking, we've been all day. I mean, they look like nothing's gonna happen. Look like everything is in vain. We knocked on the door, trying to get somebody to go to Sunday school. And uh, there ain't nobody with the door. Finally, we came to the house. Four of those snotty nosed youngins come running out. They're dirty. They're snotty nosed. They look like nobody cared about them. They want them to grab me around the leg. Said, preacher, we'll go with you in the morning. I said, hallelujah. I got me five children are going to meet with me in the morning. Her mama was a drunk addict. Her daddy was a drunk addict. Her nobody won't know what to do with her. But there's no killer war. They wanted somebody to come by and get her. A week after week went by. We went by and got them children. But they are sturdy. Nobody didn't care about them. But I kind of felt like John D. Rockefeller. 
not going to drive around with me. I mean, I was glad, brother, from the beginning that I was made. I mean, it didn't do us good sometimes. I had to go down the gutter, go down the alley, and get somebody that didn't see him. And get proud of it. And get out of the ditch with him. And say, God, help me. I don't want him to go. God, I'm enjoying this, ain't you? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I get on saving grace, but don't I finish up later? I'm talking about yeah. saving grace. Yeah. I mean, saving grace. Yeah. Yeah. We went over and got some youngers one night. And I'm supposed to have been preaching, so I wanted a cancellation. You ever had a cancellation? I've had several of them. Yeah. Several cancellations. Yeah. But I'm telling you, why I'm feeling sorry for myself, but God was working something out on the other end. Yeah. I told my wife, I said, Hold, we never went by and got them on Sunday night, but we're off tonight going to our home church. Let's go by and get them young and give them a good blessing tonight. We drove up in that yard that night, and guess who walked out on the porch dressed ready to go to church? The only four young and sitting there waiting on somebody to come get them, but mom and daddy is ready to. Yeah. Hey, Oh, 
And he said, you know what that old preacher, the preacher told me when I started, he said, if you don't quit preaching like you're preaching, he said, you ain't going to be able to sing. And he said, when you get where you can't sing, he said, you ain't going to have no meetings. And the devil said, you know that to be a fact. You're holding out your heart at all. I said, you're right again. <laughs> no, the conversation was really didn't much. We went up a road. We got up to Birmingham, up to Garrett. Then we turned off and got up to Sand Mountain where I live. But another visitor entered the car about that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was an old friend. But a guy, my counselor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the living for that. Yeah. He entered that car and it said, Son, who calls you to preach? I said, You did. He said, Who qualifies you to preach? I said, You did. He said, Who spent the plan your need while you preached? I said, You did. He said, Run the devil out there and quit paying his gas. Yeah. 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 We roll the We roll on a parking yard. I'm yeah. trying to get rough with God, get stuff out of my heart. Brother, I'm talking about squeezing and grave. I got up by the car, got out of my yard, woke up the front porch. My wife met me in the door and said, Guess what happened tonight? So what you doing up the wee hours in the morning? You know I'm tired? She said, I just wanted to tell you what happened. I said, what happened? She said, baby girl Allison got saved tonight while you've gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about strengthening and grace. I said, honey, if you don't mind, I'd like you to tell me a horn and watch this turn. I put me in a clean bar sauce. I feel like riding in the morning of the I want to preach about God's grace again. Oh, Lord God, I'm talking about Trinity Grace. When they put me, when you're winner, when you yeah. take the ball, yeah. let go of yeah. that grace. Yeah. Yeah. Point number four. Yeah. I mean, he got seven grace. Seven grace. I don't know about you, and I started out preaching. I don't dehorn the goat, to you. Yeah. I knew everything there was to know about preaching. I mean, I can answer your prophetical questions. I can answer your doctrinal questions. We make all the divisions in the Word of God. Haven't been saved three months. I mean, no doubt, everything. Just ask me anything about the Bible. I mean, I was a first class smart at it, what I was. I mean, brother, I know all it wants to go. Nobody could tell me nothing. But, brother, 12 years down the road now, as I look back, brother, it ain't me, but it's God we need, brother. I mean, God's the one we need. It ain't just the whistle britches, that sounding brass, or people and cymbal, but it's God. Settling grace. Best way to settle a man, he had to take me down the woodshed several times. <coughs> when I come back, I wished I hadn't been, but it was settling in the grace of God. It stopped you running. Here to yonder, looking here, looking there. Just settle down somewhere, camp out. Enjoy the blessings of God. Amen. Yeah. Find out where God wants you. Yeah. Get your good seat and just kind of settle in. Yeah. Hey, God, watch yeah. this. Amen. Yeah. How many of God leaves you in the spirit? He's a Bible-believing preacher. And he lives right. He wants to do right. There ain't no need to go a hundred miles looking somewhere else. Just settle in here. Say, God bless me. God use me. God help me. God settle me. And use me the grace of God. Point number five. They school in grace. Titus 2 11, for the grace of God to bring his salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us, denying ungodliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's school in grace. You know what we mess up at? We want to put the rules and the regulations on a Christian when they get saved. Yeah. We want to give them our set of rules and say, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It ain't just preachers, it's, it's Christians. 
Somebody get saved just to pray you, baby, and cry. That's right, you know you had to give up smoking. You had to give up chewing. Can I just say this? I don't smoke, dip, nor chew, nor run with those that do. But brother, I mean, them rules and regulations, they'll kill a young Christian. What we turn into is just little fools. What them little regulations are. You are not where it is. You are not where it is. You are not where you hire like this. Huh? Oh yeah, brother, we'll do it. I say, brother, let God deal with a man. Let him work in a man's life. Let brain teach him. Let school him. Let burn sin out of him. And wait on God to do it. And keep your hands off of us. My daddy chews tobacco and he'll be chewing tobacco next time you see me. He ain't gonna quit. <laughs> and I don't agree with it. But he's gonna do it. He said to something you're old. He'll shoot you, run you out of your house. You want in that body of tobacco. Now I've let him come and sit over in the corner and take a look at you every now and then and try to serve God. I had to run him out the door. I had. I had. I mean, brother, God's grace will screw the man, but you got to wait on God to do it. Hey, I played ball and I got saved. I worked all my life to be a ball player. I played college basketball and God saved me. I had on them little shorts out there. I put them on out there play my little pair. And there I was. There were things I won't mention I was doing. But I was wild and crazy. And God saved me. And I got saved. God came to me. And after a while, I went in there and seen my coach. And I gave him my shorts. And I said, buddy, I won't be back out here no more. I said, God saved me, and I don't feel right no more dressed like this out here in front of y'all. He said, the cheerleaders over there dressed half clothed, and me over here, I said, that just, just won't work for me. Didn't nobody have to tell me, hey, the night I got saved, I had long hair. I come in that night, God saved me, and I had long hair. Yeah! 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 Oh yeah! yeah. Oh yeah! He did! Yeah! Hey! Yeah. I mean, I'm still saved too. Yeah. Twelve years! They said it won't last till the corn comes in! They get them from twelve years! And now they plant another! And they still reel in my heart! Yeah! I come home at night and never read the Bible. Didn't know nothing. All I know is it's a booger man who moved out, and God has moved in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, Daddy, I said, if you will, Daddy, for me and Mama had a little badly cost a spell around the living room when I got home that night, you know. Holy dance. <laughs> Do you good sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> I said, Daddy, I don't know nothing about God. I don't know about church. But I said, I know I'm brand new tonight. I said, if you will, Daddy, I want you to take him shears if I can cut my hair off tonight. I said, I don't know much about it, but I feel new inside. I'd like to new now. I like to look new when the sun comes up in the morning. <laughs> Daddy took some shears. I look like I've been through a weed eater. I look wild. I look like poodle dog. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you one thing. Glory to God. It's bubbling in my soul. I don't know how to dress. I know nothing. That preacher that night had on a long sleeve white shirt with a collar button right here. I got up the next morning and dug out one of my old daddy's white shirts with long sleeves. Put it on and button that top up. Walked out of the sunshine. 
Man, they thought I was going crazy. But I'm telling you, the glory of God was beating right here, brother. Because man, the grace had come in my heart. I walked around that day. You talk about coming and moving. I coming and moving. I didn't know that raise in hell and fussing in church. Oh, I'm going to be outside. Bless God and joy. Thank you. Well, I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Point number six. Yeah. <laughs> a sufficient grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. That's a good definition for grace. God's redemption at Christ's expense. That's a good definition. Or God's resources at Christ's expense. There's an abundant supply of the grace of God. There's an inexhaustible supply. There's an all-sufficient supply. I like what the old soft pattern said. Grace for you, grace for me. Grace for every need. Whatever it is, there's grace. For temptations, I like for trials. What about this, brother? For tongue lashes. <laughs> You ever had a good tongue lashing? I mean, somebody just thrives you with their tongue. There's grace for that, brother. There's grace for that. For termination of life. Let me give you this. Temptation is a solicitation from below, never from above. Temptation. He wants us to ease up, slack up, compromise any way he can get to us. Compromise is the devil's way of giving us compromise on the installment plans. It's always just a little here and a little there. Just do this. Just do that. Just let up here. They tell me, they said, brother, you can book up north. They'll beat you up north all over the country. You just mellow out a little bit and not be so loud. And don't run around when you preach and don't scream quiet as loud. And and, and don't be quiet as fast as you preach. Just slow down a little and kind of pre-teach, you know. Kind of hit the middle of the road. Man, I'm going to be like that. I'm going to watermelon pie. I'm going to be anywhere that preach like I'm supposed to be too. I ain't easy enough. I ain't slack enough. I ain't quitting self. Brother, they had it. They took my back and enjoy the blessings of God. God's the author of this grace, and it's an abundance. And he appropriates the grace of God. I like it. Appropriation. That's a big word for a country boy. That's good. Appropriation. I like it. Now see, if I give you the grace, I might favor somebody. But the Lord distributes that grace out equally. Amen. To the poor, to the rich. Butcher, baker, candlestick maker. The Lord's got that grace. He appropriates it. I like what Hebrews 4, 14 said. So let us come bold to the throne of grace. We might obtain mercy. I like that, don't you? Man, he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I said, Lord, one time I said, Lord, goodness. I said, they show ain't much goodness about me. He said, that's why I give you mercy to you. <laughs> that's my running partner. It's his goodness and his mercy. And I'm pleading for his mercy. Amen. I'm like an old black convict. He said, Brother Dan, he said, when I went to court the other day, I didn't want justice. I pled mercy. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I said, boy, I know what you're talking about. It ain't justice we need. It's mercy. Amen. Then there's the anticipation of that grace of God. He said, Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That grace is going to be manifested in the rapture and the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I mean, 
These youngers a while ago, they were singing about that camp dance. I like that. Amen? I started to get up and blast off with them. Oh, I like that. Amen? <laughs> How many of them like that? Blast it off as they do it. Somebody said they launched that rocket down there in Cape Canaveral. I think it's Mr. Glenn was the first astronaut. I said, that ain't so. They lied, that ain't so. You know who the first astronaut was? Oh, he Enoch. Amen. I mean, the Bible said he was and he was not. He wasn't astronaut, he was a was not. Amen. I mean, oh, he died. He walked with God. And God blessed him all one day. Let's hear with him. Amen. That's translating grace. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Translating grace. But then they transporting grace. Amen. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you better check in right here at the altar. Then you better check up, David, because someday we're soon to check out of here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Here, brother. I'm leaving here, brother, like Superman. And hey, coming back like a lone ranger. Amen. Yeah. Get us out of here. Oh, ain't God good tonight? I feel like he's come in and sit down in here somewhere less than I. <laughs> Salvation commits us in grace. Salvation continues us in grace. Salvation consummates us to grace. Someday there'll be grace to leave this world. Transporting grace. Someday to leave this world. Somebody said, Brother Dan, do you really believe that? I do. I'm honest, I do. Now somebody said, Brother Dan, I ain't scared to die. Won't you quit lying? You know you are, and I am too. Ah, uh, if you ain't, why ain't you out here trying to get a bus load up? Leave tonight. <laughs> But listen, you know why we're scared to die? Because it ain't time to die. When it comes dying time, there'll be that grace. I remember an old man. Hey, what if you What do you call that time? It's burning in Christians. Come on, doctor. What is that? What is it burning in Christians? Dark angels. I the lost this man was trying to pay. And they went and got him. They did the laws and drug him out of his law. Now they walked. The other one was headed to the cross, was going to kill him. It was bad. And the Christians gathered around that way, it was going to burn the stake that day, and they said, If it's really real, if God's really real, it's dying time. I believe his name was Knox, John Knox. It was dying time. They said, If you will, he said, Just raise one hand. Wait, you know, God really real right there at dying time. He said, I will. They tied him up to that stake, put that wood around him, set that fire, and we in there. Tied the little Christians holding around and watched him. And that fire in the gut, and the skin, the flesh, and the mail, the seeds, and the cook, smell, and smoke. They watched him. It looked like the life left his body. And Christians said, all of a sudden, them ropes burned into on his hands. He raised both hands up like Set the car. Bumblebee flew in He said, the boy said, Dad, let me have that bumblebee. He said, son, that'd be a sting. You eat a sting. The boy said, I'm going to have that bee. Well, it's daddy. Set that bee lit on the dash in the car. He took a book and come down across that bee and just barely caught the back end of that bumblebee and his sting mashed out. Come out of there, and the cold and the sting, and the bumblebee can still be He can still fly. He can still buzz, but his stinger was gone. 
He reached over and gave him that little ball, and he just played with it. And the boy couldn't be stung because there wasn't no stinger left in that bee. That's what Jesus done, brother. He went through there and took out the sting of death. And now he's been praying for us our victory. A death went into the sting. I mean, from what the cross is, we'll see. He'll be waiting for me. The Lord's coming back and redeem us, the other man. Translating grace. Out of a lonely dungeon prison house, Paul said, Bring my parchments. So when you come, he said, Bring my cloak and bring my parchments. He wanted them one more glance at them parchments. 